Hello everyone and welcome to Just Finish Coding. This is a new Scratch 3 series where you will learn how to make a fully functional 4 octave piano. In addition to the piano itself, we'll also add in some secondary features like a tempo coordinator, a metronome and so on. Here's a quick preview of Happy Birthday being played on the piano. Now for this project, you'll be needing a lot of artwork for the costumes of each sprite. You could do this all on your own or you could use the artwork that I made myself. Rather than importing each costume one by one, it will be a lot faster if you use a starter file. If you click on the downloadable files link in the description below, you will be directed to a Google Drive attachment. Once you're there, you can download the file labeled Start. If you import this file into the Scratch Online Editor, you will be ready to proceed. After you follow these steps, you may or may not see the music extension at the bottom. If you do not see it, then all you have to do to get it is to click on the Add Extension button at the bottom left of the screen and then click Music. Okay, now we're ready to begin. We can start in the initializer sprite. When the green flag is clicked, we set the instrument to piano. This should be quite obvious because we are, after all, programming a piano. Next, we make a custom block called init list. It is very important to click the checkbox which says run without screen refresh. The next thing we have to do is put the list within the main script and then broadcast a new message called init clones. When the other sprites receive this message, they will start to create their own clones. Great! The next thing that we have to do is create a new list for all sprites called Notes. I'd recommend sticking to my naming convention. The variables and lists that are created for all sprites will be spelled in all uppercase letters, while the variables and lists which are created for specific sprites will be spelt in all lowercase letters. At this point, I still haven't explained the purpose of the init list function. What this function does is give all the notes in order for a single octave and then stores it in the notes list. You'll see how this turns out. To make the code more efficient, we create a new variable for this sprite only called C. This will work as a counter. Initially in the list, we delete all of the clones. If we do not do this, there will be more and more stuff added to the list each time the game restarts and this is not something that we want. The next thing we have to do is add each letter from A to G in alphabetical order. The reason we only do it from A to G is because those are the notes in each octave. We have to keep in mind however that in addition to the white keys themselves, there are black keys as well. If we just take a look at a single octave, we will realize that there is a black sharp after each key except for the E note and after the B note. So we make sure to add in a sharp note after every note in that list with the exception of those two. Before we do that, we make one small change by taking the A note and putting it in the end. This is because the leftmost note in our virtual piano will be a B note. Now if you do want to have a C note on the extreme left, then you can put the B note at the bottom too and the code will work just fine. The next step is setting up the sharp notes. We set C to 1 and then enter into a repeat 12. The reason we looped the code 12 times is because there are 12 notes in a single octave if you also count the black keys. We then check if current note is not B or E or sharp. If the inner conditions are met, then we should not add a black key. Since we've covered the whole thing with a not operator, the condition reverses and we add a black key if the condition is met. So we insert sharp at item C plus one of notes. Each time we have to look at the next note so we change C by 1. 
Nice! If you show the list and then test out the program, you will see that the notes list takes on the correct values for each successive key. With this out of the way, we can actually start to position the white keys. Within the sprite, we start the script when the init clones message is received. At this point, it makes sense to delete all the clones that already exist, so we add a delete this clone within a repeat one. We have to nest this code inside a repeat one because we cannot continue the script if the delete this clone block is used alone. The next thing that we have to do is switch costume to white, hide and then clear all graphic effects. If you take a look at the costumes tab, you will see that there are two costumes, white and white 2. The white 2 costume will show when the user presses the key and during all other times, only the white costume will be shown. There are a lot of clones that we have to generate and doing it individually will cause quite a bit of lag. It makes sense therefore to create a block for this purpose. We can call it init clones and once again it is very important to click the checkbox which says run without screen refresh. The block can be thrown right in after we clear all graphic effects. The position of each key as well as the sound that will be played when a key is pressed requires some order among the keys. We need to have some way of distinguishing between the keys, so for this, we create a variable for this sprite only called clone ID. When a variable is set for this sprite only, each clone of that sprite will have its own copy of it. We can use this variable to number each clone. In the start, we set clone ID to 1. What we will do after this is to make the sprite go to the left end of the stage and create clone after clone while moving rightwards. Thus, we set x to negative 240 and y to 0. After this, we get into a repeat 49. 49 is the total number of combined keys that we want to create. This includes both the black keys and the white keys. You can play around with this number if you want to create fewer clones, but this number will make the clones fit snugly into the screen. We then check if item clone ID mod 12 of nodes is equal to sharp. This condition will tell us whether a key is a black key or a white key. Let us say for example that we want to find out whether the 13th clone being generated is a black key or a white key. We just have to assume that the same pattern continues in the nodes list. The nodes list has 12 unique keys but the 13th key will be a repeat of the first key. The 14th key will be a repeat of the second key, the 15th key will be a repeat of the third key, and so on. The mod operator just gives us a remainder to work with. 13 mod 12 gives a result of 1, which is the note that the 13th key should be. Again, number 13 was used just as an example, and we will go through every number from 1 to 49. If the condition evaluates to true, then it means that we are dealing with a black key. Since this is the white key sprite, we won't generate any black key clones here. We will ignore this condition by changing x by 0. It is tempting to start to create clones in the else statement, but this will be a big mistake. Let's think about what would happen if clone ID was a number that was divisible by 12, for example 24. Since the notes repeat at intervals of 12, you would say that the key should take on the value of the 12th note. However, 24 mod 12 doesn't give a value of 12, it instead gives a value of 0. There is no 0th note and this leads to all sorts of problems, especially when the 12th note is a sharp, just like in our case. So we have another condition where we check if clone ID mod 12 is 0 and item 12 of notes is sharp. If this condition is true, then once again we know that the key in question is a black key, so we keep the same code. If both these conditions are false, then we know that we have to create a white key. In this case, we first change x by 16, then go to the back layer, then switch costume to white, and finally create a clone. We will be creating the clones of the black keys in the next video and we of course know that the black keys should be above the white keys. 
This is why we make the keys go to the back layer. 16 is simply the width of each clone and this ensures that the clones are lined up one after another with no space in between them. The whole point of the clone ID variable is to number the clones, so at the bottom we change clone ID by 1. This will be everything that has to be done for the clone generation. There's one other thing that we can finish in this video. Whenever the user clicks on a key, we want him to know that the key is being pressed. We can structure a simple animation for this purpose. When each clone is created, we show them and then get into a forever loop. We check if both the mouse pointer is touching a key and if the mouse is down. If both these conditions are met, it indicates a click. If this is true, then we switch costume to white too and otherwise we switch costume to white. We can also make the key move slightly downwards in order to create a better effect. Within the if statement, we change y by minus 2 minus y position, the whole divided by 3. This line of code will make sure that the clone slowly moves into a y position of minus 2. Similarly, within the else statement, we change y by 0 minus y position, the whole divided by 3. This line of code makes sure that the clone slowly moves to a y position of 0, where it is in line with the other clones. At this point, the thumbnail is blocking the view of all the clones. We can simply go to the thumbnail sprite and then hide it. Alright, that will be everything that has to be done for this video. If you test out the program, all the white keys should appear in order and also animate when they are clicked. If you've enjoyed this video, please make sure you leave a like and also don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.